have to show the mechanisms for these. I think we just have to show the products. That's what they were saying. But if who's we, they? The people of the SLC. Ah, right. They said yeah. that they don't think that that will happen. But if we do, should we show that this rotated? Um, that's not necessary okay. um, over here, I don't think. Okay. Um, generally speaking, the electron pushing arrows are not supposed to be geometrically accurate. Right. They're just supposed to show the movement of the electrons. Okay. By the way, um, actually I think there's a good chance that you will have to show this mechanism on the test. Um, so there's different types of problems. You might get what's called predict the products. Well, if it's predict the products, then you'll get full credit if you have the right product, whether or not you show the mechanism. But you also might see what's called a mechanism problem, where they actually ask you directly, show the mechanism. In fact, you usually will see those. Okay. So um, it's a little weird that they said that. Usually you yeah. will see mechanism problems. But even more important than that, even if the problem does not directly ask you for the mechanism, you need to get into the habit of always doing the mechanism on your own, because the mechanism is the way you figure out the product. And the mechanism is the way you understand the characteristics of what's going on. Well, the mechanism's so. always the same for E2, right? It's just the fact that you have to rotate it if, if there's right. hindrance. The, mechanism is, uh, the basic mechanism is the same, but the, the problem with OCAM is there's lots of little variations. Uh, and that's why you need to do a lot of practice and lots of uh, see all the different variations that can come up. And how can you adapt to those variations? The best way to be able to adapt is to actually use the electron pushing arrows to see how they apply to that new situation. Um, yeah, so it is always best to actually draw the mechanism. Okay, so we drew the mechanism uh, over here. All right, and now we're uh, ready to show our product. So I'm going to start drawing the product like this. And I'll label this the alpha carbon and this the beta. So a good way to draw the product of an E2 is just start with, say, the skeleton of the product. So here's the skeleton. We know that there's going to be a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbon. And now we have to put in four substituents. Two substituents over here and two substituents uh, over here. So first you do the skeleton, then you can do the substituents. Uh, okay, now um, here's the leaving group, and here's the beta hydrogen. Now I'm going to draw a line here through this. Notice that um, in this picture, so another important principle is, uh, for E2 is that we have an anti periplanar transition state and then we have retention of configuration. The product is going to retain the configuration from the anti periplanar transition state. We'll see what that means in a second. The product is going to retain the configuration from the anti periplanar transition state. We can see what that means in a second. <coughs> So let's look at this ethyl group and this hydrogen uh, over here. Would you consider the ethyl group and the hydrogen here to be on the same side or opposite sides of this picture? The if we consider side. this line. They're on the same side of this line, right? They're on the same side. Well, we're going to retain that configuration. So they should also be on the same side of the double bond. Uh, let's see. The ethyl group is on the beta carbon. Hydrogen is on. Oh, did I get? Uh, yeah, the hydrogen is on the alpha carbon. Again, it's really helpful to keep labeling the alpha and the beta carbons in your Newman projection as well, because it's easy to get uh, confused. Okay. Well, now we're finally answering you guys' question. You guys' question was basically, how do we know who goes on which side of the double bond? Well, now we're saying, seeing who goes on which side of the double bond. So basically, the things that started out that were cis in the anti periplanar um, transition state will remain cis in the double bond. So should we show that with a wedge or a dash? Or is drawing it just with those lines okay? That's right. In fact, it's probably better not to use a wedge or a dash here, oh. because what's the geometry? <coughs> what's the geometry of this carbon? What's the name of that geometry? SP2 hybridization. Good. And what's the name of that geometry? A tetra Yes, trigonal planar. It looks like you guys might want to review that. This is trigonal planar. SP2 hybridization gives you trigonal planar, um, not tetrahedral. What, what, does, um, what does the word planar mean? It means flat. Well, if something's flat, you don't need wedges and dashes. Right. In fact, it's yeah. showing that it's showing it's something the opposite. Okay. And yeah. you can't if something's flat, um, then you don't need wedges and dashes. Um, so you only need wedges and dashes for things that are tetrahedral. 
You only need wedges and dashes for things that are tetrahedral because then you have things going in many different directions. Uh, but anytime you have something flat, you don't need wedges and dashes. Um, so, uh, and in fact, it's better not to draw them uh, usually. So once we have a double bond, it's going to be flat. That's an important idea about geometry. Double bonds are flat. Okay, so it's best not to draw this with wedges and dashes. How, how can you put the H on that side? On which side? I'm sorry, did I ask that question again? Yeah, how did you know to put it here? I was thinking of putting it there. Oh, well, so we're focusing on this hydrogen, right? Mm -hmm. Now, which carbon is this hydrogen attached to in the Newman projection? The alpha carbon or the beta carbon? The alpha. Yeah, it's attached to the alpha carbon. Well, that's how I know to put it over here, because this is the alpha okay, carbon. And those two are on the same side, so you know you have to put it in the up position. The, the, the CH2, CH3, and the hydrogen on the same side of the... Right. Now, one thing I should say is it, um, you, it, you, could eat, you could just as well put them both down below, okay. as long as they're on the same side. So you could put them both above or both below. That as doesn't make any difference, okay. as long as they're on the same side. That's right. Okay. The key thing, so this doesn't tell you whether these will end up above or below. It just tells you that they'll both re end up cis to each other, because they, they're cis in the Newman projection. So it doesn't really matter if they're... So yeah, you could draw it either this way or this way. It doesn't make any difference. The key thing is that these two groups are cis in the Newman projection, and they're going to retain that configuration in the product. All right. Um, and then um, over here, we have a methyl and a deuterium, which are also cis. And you just, the key thing is to make sure that you put them on the right atom. This methyl group is on the beta carbon. It would be easy to get confused about that. So we put the methyl group over here. And then the deuterium is over here. Alright, also notice that the things that were trans in this picture are also trans over there. For example, in this picture, um, the deuterium is trans to this ethyl group, because the deuterium is on the right and the ethyl is on the left, while well, they're trans in this picture as well. So we're retaining all the cis and trans configurations. Everybody who is cis in the Newman projection ends up cis here, and everyone who's trans ends up trans. Um, so in this picture, if I had decided to draw the first two substituents below, then I have to draw the next two substituents up above, like this. So you, either of these would be fine. You can see there's the same exact molecule, right? Because you can just take this molecule and flip it. You can just take this and flip it and superimpose here. So it certainly doesn't make any difference which way you draw these because they're the same molecule because they're superimposable on each other. So you only, you'd only want to draw one of these. You wouldn't want to draw both. Um, by the way, going back to an earlier question, there is a way to draw this with wedges and dashes. Um, it's just not the best way. Um, because we can, we can draw everything, we can draw all the bonds in the plane of the page, and that's the simplest thing. If you can draw all the bonds in the plane of the, plane of the page, you might as well, because um, this is flat. So you really only need wedges and dashes for tetrahedral stereo centers. Um, okay, here we use wedges and dashes, because here this was tetrahedral. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, um, there's a whole bunch of steps there, so you can see why uh, most people never really learn how to do the stereochemistry for E2, because there's a bunch of steps you have to go through. So let's review the steps. Uh, first of all, once you see that it's going to be an E2 reaction, label the alpha and the beta carbons. And keep labeling them in all your pictures. Notice that I labeled the alpha and the beta carbons in the original picture, in my Newman projection, in my second Newman projection, and in my product. Keep labeling the alpha and the beta carbons. And that will allow you to identify the beta hydrogen and the leading group. You gotta keep your eyes on those. Maybe it might be a good idea to circle those, the beta hydrogen and the, uh, and the uh, leaving group. Because it's easy to lose track of what we're focusing on here. If there wasn't just a hydrogen on the beta mm -hmm. carbon, like if it was like a OH or something, mm -hmm. would we then have to choose between this one and this one? You're saying what would happen if this was a hydroxy? Yeah. Well, you couldn't do an E2 then, because an E2 requires there to be a beta hydrogen to be taken yeah. by the base. So it's just you be an E2 to be That's a right. Okay. Um, so in order to have an E2, there has to be a beta hydrogen. That, that, would, be a, that would be a good trick question on the exam. <laughs> uh, that, that's actually very typical. They might say, why does an E2 not happen here? And you're expecting to see, oh, it doesn't happen because there's no beta hydrogen. 
By the way, that's a good example of how it always helps to draw the mechanism. If you tried to draw the mechanism there, you would say, well, wait a second, there's nobody to put the head in this arrow. Uh, and then you would see what's going wrong. Okay, all right, so we, we know there's gonna be a beta hydrogen. 